everybody. What's up? Welcome to Kind of Beats and welcome to a quick little video on looping and then slamming it into a bus compressor. So um, I wanted to make this video because I, I've, uh, I, got, I got a track in the other day and it was super not busy. So it literally has a hi-hat snare, 808 kick and a sample plus a vocal take. So that's six tracks, if I count that correctly. Six tracks to make a whole song. Brilliant. But the story goes that the uh, producer for this track is, I think, 17 or 18, but he's a young gun. You know, he's just getting into it. And he really wanted a fat track out of this. And uh, so I thought to myself, yeah, man, I used to, when I was 17 years old, I had an MPC and I would make music exactly the same way. I had a kick, snare, bass and samples that I would chop up or, or, or just play a sample out, but that would be the shit, you know? And then would you would add some vocals and it would all of a sudden not sound too bad. You'd be like, mind blown. But how do you get this, uh, this thought process of just drums, bass, and the sample to sound more together? Because generally speaking, what you'll run into when you make this type of music is that it just sounds like those things are stacked on top of each other, but it doesn't have that like squishy sound, that dirty, nasty sound that you want to have. So before this song sounded like this. Oh, cock, it sounded like this. So it's dope, right? The idea is there. And then after. Or. After. And in the after version, we have what they were asking for, which was a fat Jay Dilla of Flying Lotus, early 2000 era type of drum sound with the with the loop being all squishy and wobbling around and everything. So how do you get to that? Uh, so let me just show you how to get to that. And then maybe you can also apply this to your uh, sampling techniques uh, if you make music like this. So it's quite easy to get this sound. You just have to kind of switch your, your brain around a little bit. And instead of thinking, hey, I'm going to be just playing in another bass line, I'm going to be doing, uh, I'm going to play in another synthesizer or this or that, Limit yourself and think, I only have this one loop. I can't put in more stuff. How do you get it then? Well, then you take the original loop that you have here and start thinking of what does it still need? So when I listened to this by itself, this loop. I thought to myself, okay, it's very uh, nice and it sounds great as it is, like a little guitar loop, but I don't feel that I have low end warmth. Uh, so we need to add that in. And I also feel like the sample, although it really has a lot of character, it doesn't have the character yet of that, that wobbly broken type of feel that uh, Madlib would have, for instance. So if we put in the Goodhertz wow control, we can start moving it around a bit. <laughs> a little bit of a broken like VCR tape machine type of feel that, that that's what I get and this is just a preset so if you do have this plugin just open up this subtle widener and you're golden uh, so that's pretty good then we have the tube compressor here which is just a dirty compressor um, I put it on triple mode and recovery time fast just to get a little bit more uh, saturation out of it but at the same time um to to just slam down a bit on the on peaks that are coming in but we're getting a little bit of saturation and we're getting control of the overall um volume there then we have the eq8 which is just an eq8 okay so easy right so how do we then you know now that we've shaped and shook shooken the the loop even more, how do we get this, this warmth? Okay, so this is where it becomes interesting. Back in MPC land, you know, when I would do this, 
I would have to time stretch and be all difficult and I would have to re-record with like EQs before everything. It was annoying. But now it's really easy. You just put on complex mode, put on transpose a minus 12, put your uh, more warmth EQ on as well because you only need a little bit of that low end goodness. Take an effect rack, which is from Sound Toys again. I'm a Sound Toys fan. And I use the preset Jacko Fat Chorus. So let me show you that. Without the effect rack. So with that effect rack, the only thing I'm doing is I'm trying to push it together on the side a little bit um, so that we have a wider sound stage than before. Again, we only have five tracks to make this sound sound broken and open and fat all at the same time. So a little bit of effect rack to just slide it open a bit uh, helps a lot. Then we needed a bit more warmth. And if you're maybe noticing a pattern here, we have the top end here and here we have the low end and then here in a bit more warmth we're going to have a little bit of low mid now again i'm following my gut instinct here that i kind of want it to be a little bit wide and nasty so the sample itself is just the same way it was before um, you could maybe start messing with uh, pitch a little bit here as well, just for fun. But I use the fat chorus preset. Again, just a preset, just copy paste it. It'll work for you. Um, and it's there. And then after that, I slammed it into an amp because I wanted it to be filthier. So filthy, filthy, filthiest. But then together, that all really starts making sense. Like it's kind of nice. We have that like really warm blanket on speaker type of vibe that you would have back in the day as well. So how do you get it to all sit together? And this is kind of where the whole sound comes from. So those are the first little steps, but then you need the together fat filth. Uh, and that can only be done with the Valve compressor. Now this is a uh, emulation of the 303 and then it had a vinyl sim button and then with the vinyl sim button you could instantly get it dirty now over at good hertz they uh took the vinyl sim button and reversed engineer it so that the vinyl sim button now has controls like crazy so we have wow lo-fi compressors we have attack and release we have a, a side chain tilt that you can pop in crunch noise everything and even uh, different types of um of, of of nastiness here as well all right so this is all dope and only with this does this so cocked it. <laughs> hey guys so only with this does it actually oh for fuck's sake so only with this does do you get that together smacky sound so let me just show you it without it because all of a sudden you'll be like "Ooh, that doesn't sound good I don't even know what that is. I don't even know. So when you slam into, uh, I, I used a preset called Master Bump, by the way. When you slam into this Evolve uh, compressor, you can get that like Mad Libby, you know, early 2000s type of sound. And it's super nice to know that. So I think I will leave you with this. I'm going to just uh, play the first part of the track as well because this is another early trick of mine of back in the day. Let's turn on the vocals as well and check this out. So back in the day with the MPC, you could like uh, loop out a track and then you would have, you know, your cut at tracks and then you could play everything. It's, check it out. <laughs> Ah, 
uh, you will have to listen to the link below for the rest of the track. And I just got a update from one of my patrons, and he said Sound Toys is going to be free until the end of June. What the tits. Honestly, what the tits. So, good times. Uh, check Sound Toys out now for free. Maybe Good Hertz is going to do something like the same thing. Check that out in the description. Much love, massive shout out to the artist and good luck with the track and everybody stay safe, stay healthy. Peace out. <laughs> I'm going to go. <laughs>